This weekend, Iranian President Mahmoud Ahmadinejad begins a trip to Latin America, where he's expected to discuss economic partnerships in a number of countries, including Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Ecuador. The trip comes as European Union leaders consider a ban on buying oil from the country and as U.S. and Israeli officials prepare for Austere Challenge 12, a massive military drill involving thousands of troops. Iran's Revolutionary Guards will also conduct another naval exercise next month in an effort to demonstrate their ability to block the Strait of Hormuz. For more on the latest details, the Real News Network's Paul Jay spoke to investigative reporter Gareth Porter. First of all, let's just quickly catch up on what's been happening. So let's start with the American, the new American sanctions. How significant are they? What, what will they do? Well, first of all, it's important to understand that this whole idea of sanctions that are against the Iranian central bank as well as the oil export sector of Iran uh, was really an idea that came directly from the Israeli government of uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu uh, and his American allies, uh, extreme right-wing pro-Israeli neoconservatives clustered around the the, uh, organization called the uh, Foundation for the Defense of Democracies. Uh, They're the ones who put forward the specific proposal which was shopped to the Obama administration as well as to the U.S. Congress back in November. And the idea was uh, that very, very explicitly that, that what would happen is that the uh, central bank uh, of Iran would be considered to be a, uh, uh, a black mark against any financial institution that imports oil. And if you Uh, had any business to transact with the Iranian Central Bank, uh, you would not be able to do so without being uh, punished by uh, the United States government. And that meant that all countries that import Iranian oil would not be able to use the Iranian Central Bank for uh, for their payments. And, uh, of course, the idea was, indeed, to cut off, insofar as it's possible, all imports of Iranian oil from as many countries as possible. So how would that affect China, which is the number one purchaser of Iranian oil? Well, uh, the Israelis and their allies in the United States never thought for a moment that the Chinese were going to break their uh, oil relations with Iran, nor did they believe that uh, uh, that uh, the uh, Indians would do so. The Indians were considered to be far too much reliant on uh, Iranian oil as well. So really what it came down to was that they hoped to uh, uh, use the, uh, the EU and the United States uh, to get uh, most or all EU countries uh, to either cut off or minimize uh, the uh, import of Iranian oil, as well as a number of other countries uh, in the Far East, particularly Japan and South Korea. Um, and, and there are a lot of questions surrounding this, not the least of which was whether it was possible to even have a major impact on Iranian export of oil without basically causing a great deal of uh, inflation of oil prices worldwide. So in recent days, you, you, you wrote a piece which essentially said that President Obama is trying to distance himself somewhat from any potential Israeli strike against Iran. Uh, what, what's your take on this? Well, what what I understand from uh, from people who have been following this closely, particularly Trita Parsi, who is, of course, the executive director of the uh, uh, the National Iranian American Council uh, and and a specialist on the triangular relationship between the United States, Israel, and Iran, is that uh, people in the White House and around the White House are saying that. Uh, President Obama uh, believes that he can credibly distance himself from uh, an an Israeli strike against Iran, uh, perhaps coming uh, this this year sometime, uh, by uh, issuing a series of statements uh, or having his uh, his cabinet members issue statements, which clearly uh, make it uh, you know make it clear that the United States is opposed quite strongly to an Israeli strike. Um, and that uh, he can communicate this in other ways, perhaps, to the Iranians, so that Iran will not hold the United States responsible for Israel. Now, how how much do you think the tensions 
between these countries, of course, are real. But how much do you think this is about playing to domestic audiences in all three countries, meaning Israel, Iran, and the United States? Well, I, would, I was, in fact, much more attracted to that approach that uh, there's much less than meets the eye to the threats of attack against Iran a few years ago than I am now. One of the reasons for that is that you have in Israel a situation where the former chief of Mossad, Meyer Dagan, uh, has gone public uh, this past year, in, in June, his first public appearance since he left his post as, as head of Mossad in, in 2010, he uh, revealed that he and two other uh, major figures in Israeli uh, uh, military intelligence circles, the, the head of Shin Bet and the head of IDF, had uh, in fact uh, prevented Netanyahu from carrying out any adventure against Iran. And uh, it was also reported uh, in the Hebrew language uh, newspaper Mariv that there was, uh, in fact, a, a move by those three plus uh, former, uh, or I should say, President uh, Shimon Peres uh, and, and one other uh, IDF commander, senior commander, uh, which prevented uh, a, a plan or vetoed a plan by Netanyahu to attack Iran in 2010. So, and, and clearly this is not just a uh, part of a charade, because Meyer Dagan has, has gone public also in saying that attacking Iran is the stupidest thing that he'd ever heard, and also saying that this could result in the end of the state of Israel. That was The Real News Network's Paul Jay speaking to investigative reporter Gareth Porter. To view the full interview, go to therealnews.com.